Good morning and welcome to this week's service of worship from First Presbyterian Church in Dixon. Just a reminder or two before we begin, this is a communion Sunday and so if you're joining us online I encourage you to to pause for a while and to get together some items from your home that you can use for elements for communion as we come to the Lord's table this morning. We are back to just a virtual worship service this week due to the high number of COVID cases in our community currently. Our session has suspended our in-person worship services for the remainder of this month of January and we pray and hope that you will continue to join us online through these remaining four Sundays of this month. That means a couple of changes in the calendar. One of those is that the annual meeting, which was originally scheduled for the 23rd, has been moved to February 6th. And also, please don't forget your offerings this month. If you would like to send your offering in by mail, or if you're in town, you can drop it in the mail slot outside the door by the narthex entrance. I'm very grateful for the way that this congregation has continued to give and to support the work of Christ through this church, through these couple of years where things have been so challenging in so many ways. I would like to thank those who are here this morning leading us in worship. Sarah Bingaman is the liturgist today. Crystal Green is accompanying us at the piano and Dan Montague is on sound and camera. It's a blessing to be able to be together this way and pray that the Spirit of Christ fills us as we lift up our hearts and minds together to worship the Lord. Let's worship God together. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King, heirs of salvation, trusting his promise, faithfully now God's praise as we sing. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Give to the Lord the glory do his name. We, we will, will worship, worship the Lord in the, the splendor of, of his, his holiness. holiness. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. In his temple all cry, glory. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And now... Let us pray. Loving God, as we enter yet another year challenged by a mysterious virus, we turn to you for strength and hope. We find ourselves challenged to make decisions for which we feel unprepared. We are fearful and worried we desire control over a situation that eludes us. Yet with you, we find our constant abiding comfort. You are the light that reminds us to seek things for which we are grateful. You are the source of hope for a brighter tomorrow. You are the eternal one. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power and yours is the glory. Amen. Yeah. How firm a foundation 
you saints of the Lord is slain for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Then through the deep waters I call you to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not overflow. For I will be with you in trouble to bless and sanctify to you your deepest distress. The soul that on Jesus still leans for repose, I will not, I will not desert to its foes. That soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. God loves us and calls us each by name knowing we are eternally forgiven and infinitely loved let us boldly confess our sins before god merciful god in baptism you promise forgiveness and new life but we confess that we prefer our old familiar ways we cling to destructive habits we harbor grudges and we are reluctant to welcome a stranger or forgive one another. Nostalgia for the past prevents us from exploring new possibilities. In your loving kindness, forgive us. Have mercy upon us and move among us so that we might pursue new life in Christ together. Do not be afraid, for Christ has redeemed you. Baptized in the deep waters of death, he has washed away your sins. Risen from death, he invites you to be washed in the cleansing tide of God's mercy. Your sins are forgiven. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with each other. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen
And let's join together in prayer. O God, who leads us through deep waters, we praise you for the firm foundation of your love for us. We thank you that the waters of baptism have washed us clean as a sign and seal of our new life in Christ. As we enter a new year, we thank you that your steady hand leads us and holds us close. We remember this morning those who are even now passing through deep waters and fiery trials. We pray especially for Lance and his family as his mother seems to be coming near the end of her life. We pray that you will hold her close and lead her safely home. We pray for Carolyn as she heals from an injury, for Angie as she recovers from surgery, and for her mother in her ongoing struggle with cancer, that they would all find you to be a sure and steady guide. And Lord, we rejoice in the signs of your grace and power that we have seen this week. For those times in our lives when we have passed through deep waters and come safely out the other side. We pray, Lord, for your church through this long endurance race of this COVID trial that we're going through. We thank you that you have bound us together in love and pray that you would continue to do so, that you would continue to unite us in faith and spirit as we seek to be your church together in times that we don't fully understand. As we enter a new year, we pray for those who lead our community. We pray for our mayor and for the members of our city council, for those who serve our community on the Board of Education, for all those who seek to lead and to seek the welfare of our community. We pray and give thanks. We lift our prayers to you in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke 3, 15, verses 15 through 17, and then 21 and 22. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the, throng, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. 
And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love, and with, with whom I am well pleased. The Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Let's pray. Lord, speak to us your words of life and love and hope today. Amen. In the calendar of the Christian year, this Sunday is designated as the Baptism of the Lord. As I spoke about on the day after Christmas, which was just two weeks ago, the Bible doesn't give us much material for dwelling on the childhood of Jesus. So after a quick visit from the Magi on January 6th each year, the calendar fast forwards roughly 30 years to the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Having said that, it's fitting in a way that our sanctuary is still decorated for Christmas. It echoes what may also be the case in many of our homes. Even while the symbols of the celebration are still around us, the demands of life are pulling us to move on. As I also said two weeks ago, we move on hopefully changed by what we celebrate at Christmas. God's grace and power breaking into every corner of the world in our lives. But we move on. The theme that ties our two readings together comes from the Isaiah reading. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This comes from Isaiah, but we'll begin with the reading from Luke in which our Lord Jesus passes through the waters of baptism in the River Jordan. The way Luke describes this scene draws my imagination to wonder what that experience may have been like for Jesus. We have no access to the psychology of Jesus, no way to identify with the thoughts and feelings of someone who is at the same time fully human and fully God. But Jesus' baptism was a powerful moment in his identification with us in our humanity. Although Luke doesn't include it, Matthew emphasizes the fact that Jesus did not need to undergo a baptism of repentance like we do. He does it in solidarity with us. The most powerful thing in the story and the thing that Luke focuses on is what happens after Jesus passes through those waters. He says the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. 
And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. It doesn't take a big leap to imagine how powerful those words of the Father would have remained throughout Jesus' ministry when he was tempted in the wilderness by the devil, during long and lonely nights as he went from place to place, preaching and teaching, on those days when it seemed like his hand-picked disciples didn't seem to be getting it at all, in the Garden of Gethsemane and at Calvary, At these times, even when to all appearance, God had seemed to forsake him. He had that deep assurance. You are my son. I love you. I am pleased with you. Those powerful words also opened a door for temptation, a temptation to privilege. In the story of his temptation in the wilderness in Luke 4, the devil plays on this. He leads Jesus to Jerusalem, to the pinnacle of the temple, and he says to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, because God would never let his beloved Son be harmed no matter how foolish or arrogant his actions. But Jesus doesn't succumb to that temptation. According to that well-known passage in Philippians 2 that I quote so often, Jesus saw his status as God's son, as the beloved, not as a privilege to be exploited, but as a mandate for sacrificial service to pass through the waters and the fire for our sake, for our redemption. Now let's turn to Isaiah's striking and poetic declaration of the word of the Lord. The message came to the people of Israel at one of those times when they may have believed that God had forsaken them. These words came to them during the exile, after Jerusalem and the temple had been destroyed and they had been dragged off to Babylon to live under the oppressive hand of their conquerors, surrounded by the trappings of their pagan religion. And just before this, at the end of chapter 42, the Lord declared that he had given them into the hands of their enemies in judgment for their disobedience to him. Chapter 43 begins with the words, But now, all that may be true. They may be in exile, taken there because of God's judgment for their disobedience. It may appear that God doesn't love them, that he has given up on them, that he hasn't heard their prayers. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, He who formed you, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. The Lord says that his relationship with Israel is based on these two things. He is their creator and he is their redeemer. His love for them is the deep love of a parent for his or her beloved children, rooted in the strongest of all bonds that nothing can change. He has demonstrated his love for them by redeeming their ancestors from slavery in Egypt at great cost. And nothing they have done or will do can change that. Despite appearances, he has not forsaken them, even when they have forsaken him. As we read the prophets, we see how the people of Israel and Judah had fallen prey to the temptation to privilege. They went their own way, 
believing that they could get away with it because they were special to God. But their choices still had consequences, including the collapse of their society and the downfall of their nation. But now, now the Lord declares that none of that changes the foundation of their relationship with him. He is and all has and always has been and always will be their creator and redeemer. And when they pass through the waters or the fire, whether through their own doing or through things beyond their control, he will be with them. They will not be overwhelmed or destroyed. They will emerge from the flood and he will lead them home. How do these two readings connect to our lives? The New Testament connects the dots, so to speak, through our baptism. From Isaiah, we learn that our baptism proclaims God's love for us as our creator. We see this especially in the baptism of little babies, whom God includes among his people long before they are able to respond to his love. And our baptism proclaims God's love for us as our Redeemer. In baptism, we too pass through the waters, the waters of death with Jesus. And we remember that we also were redeemed at great cost. From the story of the baptism of Jesus, we learn that our baptism is not a declaration of privilege but a call to humble and sacrificial service. We hear a lot these days of some Christians claiming that they are losing their rights in our society, but they're often decrying a loss of privilege. How much better off would we all be if all who claim the name of Christ gave more attention to humbly serving God and our neighbors? From both readings, we hear a God who says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flames shall not consume you. May this be God's word to us all at the beginning of a new year. Whatever may come our way, if we are led through deep waters or through fiery trials, the Lord is with us. He is our creator and our redeemer. He has called us by name and he loves us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved, and free. The life of Jesus to recall, in love laid down for me. In love laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find as all are fed. The new community of love in Christ's communion bread. In Christ's communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share, each proud division ends. The love that made us makes us one, and strangers now are friends. And strangers now are friends. As quickened of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, 
Is in such friendship better known Alive among us here Alive among us here Together met, together bound By all that God has done We'll go with joy to give the world The love that makes us one the love that makes us one. In Isaiah 43, the Lord speaks of gathering together his people who have been scattered around the world from north, south, and east and west. He will bring them to himself. We are scattered today. Yet at the same time, we are together at this table as we celebrate Christ's living presence among us. Paul gives us this message. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that on the night he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. We lift up our hearts to you, O Lord, for it is good and right for us to give you our thanks and praise. We praise you, God of deep waters and fiery trials for your steadfast love that endures through all the generations. We praise you that you did not forget your children in their bondage in Egypt and in their exile in Babylon, that you have not throughout our history forgotten your church when it has been scattered and persecuted. We praise you for our Lord Jesus, your Son, the one you love, in whom you are well pleased. We thank you that he saw that as not a privilege to be exploited, but became a servant, humbling himself for our sake, becoming obedient to you even to the point of death on a cross that he has passed through the waters and the fire for us. In this sacrament, we remember his death and we celebrate his living presence with us. We pray that you will send your Holy Spirit now to unite us in the power of your love us with you and you with him and us with each other, that we might truly experience the communion of your Holy Spirit in this bread and cup that we share together now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When our Lord Jesus has taken bread, he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, our Savior took the cup
He gave it to his disciples. And he said, this covenant, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you. And let's pray. Lord, wherever we may be today, we pray that we might move on with this day, knowing that we have been with your people, that you are the God who never leaves us or forsakes us. May we go in the spirit of our Lord Jesus, who became a servant for our sake and for the sake of all. We pray in his name, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.